Oh, it stings your eyes. You're more of a man than I am. <laughs> uh, lost for words. Right, so it's 1.30 a.m. I'm at the base of Mount Ejen, which is a volcano in East Java. You leave at 2 a.m. It takes about two hours to climb. I don't think it's particularly strenuous. But I remember seeing it on Human Planet about 10 years ago, a David Attenborough documentary. It's got three factors. One, it's got blue flames, so the sulfuric gas ignites through the vents. And it's, I think, one of only two places in the world. The other place is in Ethiopia, where you can see the blue flames. So you go at night to see the blue flames. And then there's the largest acidic crater lake at the top. It's about a kilometer across. I think it's 0.3 pH. I wasn't good at chemistry. I don't know what that means. Don't swim in it. The thing from Human Planet is that there's sulfur miners. So they carry like 80 kilo blocks of sulfur up and down the mountain or the volcano. And rarely use protective equipment. I mean, we have gas masks so that when we go down to the crater to see the, the blue fire, we only get 10 or 15 minutes down there. So it should be quite interesting. Mix of Indonesian and foreign tourists, which is always quite cool. And it's part of a three day trip. Probably be separate videos, because I'm doing Ejen, a waterfall, and then Mount Bromo as well. So should be good. More on logistics later. We'll start climbing. It is substantially colder here sort of 10 degrees centigrade, which is a far cry from the heat of the rest of Indonesia. So everybody's around the fires trying to keep warm. It's not that cold. So quick update, we managed to clear the crowds. I think we are about halfway up. I think we'll probably do it in about an hour, but it's now very, very peaceful. Slightly misty, it's nice. It was worth going fast at the beginning to clear everybody. I feel sorry for the guide, I think he was just sick. So I might have to slow down a bit. Update, I think I'm at the top. We've got these sort of charred, charred tree stumps. So I imagine that that's something to do with the volcano. Um, and there's a sulfur miner behind me with a cart. So I don't know how far I'm gonna venture because I don't know where the edge is. Maybe we'll just have to wait for the guide. First one up, which is always nice. It's incredibly peaceful. Oh, this is the edge, I found it. I appreciate that you can't actually see anything, but it is eerily quiet here. We're just climbing down to the um, where they mine the sulphur. It is steep and deep. I think 700 meters deep, is it, do you yes. say? 700 meters deep and they're carrying 80 to 100 kilos up. It is slow and hard work, Jesus. Wow. You think your job is hard? <laughs> So we're at the blue flame. We're at the blue flame, masks are on. It's a big block of sulfur. Yes. Can I touch it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's hard. That's heavy. Oh, that's, fuck, it's heavy. Yeah, heavy. Wow. Yeah, so the sulfur uh, come out from here, actually from the earth up there, and then flows down, and then they will... And then it becomes come, solid uh, here. Yeah, it becomes solid here. <coughs> oh, that stings your eyes. I can't believe they work here.
<laughs> oh, that must be 30, 40 kilos. And then you put two. Wow. Oh. And this is the sulfur. Yes. No, I'm not very good at this. This one's a lot bigger. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, you carry this up? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. How would you do that? That is no joke. That must be oh, 50 kilos, 60 kilos maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Sun's coming up, We're making our way up to the top of the ridge to see the sulphur lake. It's um, already very impressive. It's a big cold era. Ooh. Let's wait till we get more light. So that's a lake down there. It's quite a popular photo spot. Yeah, the old. Ah, ah. <laughs> the mist is nice, but I'd like it to clear up a tiny bit. Please. This is the one that I have seen pictures of, but you can see that pe people's asses have been on this thing. <sighs> son, come on, son. I think we'll move on from there. People are starting to arrive. I think we're shit out of luck when it comes to clouds and rain and the sulfur fumes blocking the view of the lake. We can see it. It's um. It's very, very nice, but 
it's not, you know, you're not gonna get that crystal clear shot of it. And another one slightly above the clouds. It is nicer than not, it's like an octopus. <coughs> Come on, clear up, clear up. It wants to. <laughs> I think we wait. I think we may well be out of luck. It's now raining. <laughs> Dennis. Hi. <laughs> that was his first time being the first people. Yes, that's up. right. Yeah. What did you think? Is it worth it? Yeah, worth it. Yeah. I, re I, yeah, I was glad. Uh, you know, when we were there, yeah, uh, we thought, I mean, uh, I, I mean, less people. So it was great. <laughs> spread the news, spread the word. I think we'll give it 10 more minutes. Um, we can still see the lake. It's very, very deep. Come on, rain, just stop. The weather is changing by the minute here. Look <laughs> at that. So clear. I mean, it's not super clear, but so green, I mean. <laughs> that color is ridiculous. We might be just getting lucky the sun's coming through. Hopefully we'll be rewarded for waiting out the rain. The visibility does change seemingly every minute. You can see the whole lake now. Amazing. One thing that um, did come up, the guys were saying that they would carry 80 to 100 kilos of sulfur up from down there, all the way up and then down the mountain, which is, I'm gonna guess 180 to 220 pounds. I didn't personally believe that because that sounds like so much weight to carry until I picked up one of the bags and I could barely pick it up, genuinely. It looks, it looks like it would be powdery or honeycomb, so it, it, it looks light, but it's like rock. It sort of boggles the mind that they do that. And they get paid, was it 1,250 1, rupee per kilo? It's something like 6p or 8 cents <laughs> per kilo. So they make like five to $10 a day. It's not the greatest considering that you can hear them sort of coughing and stuff down there as they're breathing in the gas. It doesn't have that sort of same eggy smell. 
it, you can sort of taste it. It, it. it tastes and smells far more acidic and you can sort of feel it in your, in your throat as well. Um, so that can't be good for them. One thing, I did talk to a, a couple of um, people and I asked them if they were going to do e-gen because they were doing bromo. And they said, oh no, we don't want to do it because the miners and it's exploitative, which I thought was an interesting point. I don't think that's actually true. The miners are mining regardless of the tourists. It's just the fact that a National Geographic documentary in the human planet sort of brought the spotlight to it. So I don't feel like it's exploitative. At least I hope it's not. But yeah, it was um, really eye-opening and well worth doing. I think the sulf seeing the sulfur miners is, is the top thing. Then the blue fire and then the crater. The water is spectacular and, and the crater is big, but the most impressive thing are the, are the sulfur miners. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, I think uh, it still feels like it's going to carry on raining, so I think we're going to head down. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, to make it even more ridiculous, it's just 80 to 100 kilos, just bumped into the oldest miner here. Hey man! Hi! How old are you? My... Uh, 67. Uh, 67. Yeah. 67. And you still carry it up? My wife got on. No. No. Uh, oh, so they just keep the sulfur and the control. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 67 years old. Okay. Wow. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, your name? Simon. Uh, Marjugi. Marjugi. Yes. Nice to meet you. Okay. Right. <laughs> Wait, so yeah, you only retired from carrying the, yeah, so the sulfur yeah. one month ago. One month. So he was carrying it at 67. <laughs> that is nuts. I hope I get to do that when I'm 67. Whoa. I can't compute. Computer says no. These are the baskets they carry the sulfur in. Oh, it's so heavy. Can I try? Okay, let's see if we can try. <laughs> Am I going to hurt my back doing this? Uh, 50 kilos. Only 50 kilos? Yeah, like this. Like yeah? that? Okay. Okay. This is a quick way to slip a disc. <laughs> and then like that? Yeah. I can't even... Okay. One, two... Oh, wait, wait a second. One, two, three. Oh, oh you're strong. <laughs> oh, can you carry it up? This is uh, <laughs> not fun. Oh, that hurts on the neck. <laughs> and then how do you put you okay? it down? You okay? Okay. 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 Yeah. Keep yeah. down. Keep down. Keep down. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay, my friend. Too strong. Look at it. It is broken, it's... my friend. Broken. Yeah. You're so thin, though. <laughs> you carry it up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're more of a man than I am. More of a man than I am. Wow. <laughs> now you can feel it. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. I'm lost for words. Well worth coming here. As I said, it might seem a bit gimmicky or exploitative. I don't. I really don't think it is, in my opinion. I, I feared that it would be the case, but it's not. It's spectacular it's incredibly impressive what these guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis slightly depressing that people have to do that to make a livelihood but that's a whole nother subject in terms of logistics like if you're in east java obviously you can you can come here it's i think a hundred thousand during the weekday entry and one hundred and fifty thousand rupee on the weekends for locals i think they pay like five thousand which is ace you can do trips from bali say changu um, and you can do it overnight you leave at 7 p.m you drive to gilimanuk take the ferry and then it's about an hour drive from the ferry the ferry only takes about 45 minutes and then you're back the next day um, so that's what i've done but i'm actually extending so mine's a three-day trip because we are going to go to a waterfall which looks amazing and then we're going to go and do Mount Bromo, which is another large volcano. I think 
from Changi, it's not cheap, it's around three and a half million rupee, which is 200 pounds, 250 pounds, but I'm paying 350, I think, in order to tack on Bromo and the waterfall, um, which seems like better value. Um, that's for a private tour. Um, you can join groups and it's cheaper. I hope that helps. Um, yeah, very good. Very good. I'm so glad that we got it clear and we can see all the way to the other side now. Had to sit through about a half an hour of rain in order to get it, but it was worth it. Yeah. Very good. I think I have a thing for volcanoes, but um, Masai Volcano really piqued my interest. God, I can still taste the, the, like, the sulfur gas. Uh, you know, if you came, I mean, uh, if you come uh, the first, uh, you know, it's like a private area for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have the whole volcano yeah. to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're converted to yeah, nice. be the first person up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it it must be a completely different experience. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, we have a convert. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> when we got up yeah. there there was nobody else there. And then also this you could imagine. see <laughs> you could see how many people there were yeah. crowded around the workers. Whereas it was just us for maybe 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, after 20 minutes and then uh, a lot of people came. Yeah, to... but then only four or five people yeah. came. Yeah. By the time we got to the top, there must have been 40, 50 people down there. Yeah. <laughs> I won't bang on about it. 